Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a simple lower third like this and make it fully editable and customizable in Premiere through the Essentials Graphics window. It's actually easier than you may think. Roll that intro. Alright, so here we are in Adobe After Effects. Don't worry if you're new to the program, I'm going to make it super easy. We're gonna create a new composition at 1920 by 1080 pixels, 23976, from zero to 10 seconds. Click OK. And the first thing we do is we're gonna create our text. What I'm gonna do is zoom in here. To do this, I'm holding Alt or Option if you're on a Mac and using a mouse wheel to scroll in and holding spacebar to pan around. Super useful. It'll make your life easier if you're trying to adjust things. Anyways, I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna say, custom lower third and the first font I'm going to use will be the Roboto font. I'm going to set this to be about 60 pixels. Then I'm going to click again and I'm going to do by user here. And for this font I'm going to actually go back to that railway font and set this to be about 40 pixels. Next I'll go over to the move tool selection tool and just line these guys up and then move into creating our vertical line. To do that, I'm going to come into our composition window, right click and do new shape layer. On here, I am going to click, left click and drag a rectangle and then this will pop up here. So I'm going to left click on shape layer, hit enter and then name this line for reference. Then to set the attributes for this line, I'm gonna go into the rectangle and rectangle path properties and uncheck this link, but then set my width to be about 10. And then for a height, let's try 120. Now what I'll do is press V to go back to move tool, place this here. The final thing I'm gonna to wanna to do here is make sure that my anchor point is set to the middle of this so that when we rotate it, it rotates about that middle axis, not about the middle of the frame. To do that, I'm gonna go up to the upper left corner here and pan behind anchor, hold control or command and double click on that. Now my object here will be able to rotate in the center of this. It'll make more sense later. The other thing I'm gonna do at the beginning is go to my rectangle path and set a keyframe for this, and then also do it half a second in. I'll hit this diamond here on the side to enable that, then go back to the beginning, and let's go ahead and make our size for the height zero, so that for the first half second, our rectangle animates in. Now, to make things easier on us, I'm gonna press U on the keyboard. This will make it so that only our active adjusted keyframes are viewable. You can hit U to hide them and U to bring them back up. Next thing I'm going to do is add in a rotation keyframe. So Shift R will bring up another attribute for rotation. If you were to have just pressed R, it will only do rotation. So I'm going to press U to bring up our active keyframes and Shift R to add another thing on top of our active keyframes. I'm going to start with rotation at zero and then go to our half second point and do about 10 seconds. Next, I'm going to do position keyframes, so I'm going to hold Shift P to bring up that. I'm going to set a keyframe here and then go about half a second and drag our position all the way outside. Then I'm going to go one full second and then I'm going to left click on our position keyframe back here and then press Ctrl V, copy paste, to paste it back there. So now our animation looks like this. To make it look better, I'm going to select these keyframes by left click and dragging, and then pressing F9 on my keyboard to easy ease these keyframes. So now it's a little more smooth. But to make it even better, I'm going to go into the graph editor here, and I'm going to left click this control point and drag it all the way to the left, as well as this control point all the way to the left. And now you get something that looks like this much better. Next thing I'm going to do is build the mask that will wipe on and off our text. To do this, I'm going to right click and do new shape layer again. 
This time I'm going to come up to the pen tool and I am going to first set where I want this to start, which will be here. And I am going to left click up here and then click here and then hold shift and left click out to the side. This will make a straight line and then hold shift again and click up here. Now we have a mask built or rather not a mask yet, but just a shape layer placed on top of our text. To turn this into a mask, first I'm going to name this mask so that I keep track of it. I'm going to drag it below my text and then I'm going to set a track mat to alpha mat. Now what this will do is it will mean anytime the mask is over our text it will show it and anytime the mask is not over our text it will hide it. I'll press P to bring up position and show you that. By lowering this mask, I can see that it will hide our text. So what I'm gonna do is press U to hide this keyframe, and then duplicate this mask by pressing Control D or Command D, and dragging this below my custom lower third. So now I have my masks here, and both of them are set to alpha. Now for this to work, you need the object above to not have the eye dropper checked, or the eyeball, just something to know. Then to animate this with the line, what I'm going to do is use the pick whip, as it's called, and link our masks to the line layer by left clicking and dragging it up to there. So that way when the line moves, so does our mask. Now this works great for revealing our text here, but at the beginning of our animation, we don't want it to be visible. So we're going to go to this point here, and then I'm going to select both masks by holding control, that way you don't select the middle layer. And then I'm gonna press T on my keyboard to bring up opacity. So at this point, I want the opacity to actually be zero, and I'll set a keyframe. Then I'll go one frame to the right by hitting page down, and then setting the opacity to be 100%. This way, at our beginning of our animation, this is not visible, and then by the time we get here, it'll now flip from zero to 100, and now it will reveal our text here. So now let's go ahead and watch that back. Nice. Now to conclude our animation, let's just go out to about four and a half seconds, and what I'm going to do is take the position keyframe of our line, hit the little diamond on the left here. Then go about half a second and move this position keyframe all the way back to the right. This will hide our text. Then I'm going to go to our masks and again set a keyframe for 100% page down and now I'm going to set them to 0% so that when I bring the rectangle line back, control C, control V. That way it does not show our text. The final thing to help create that animation at the end is I'm going to go back to our size properties of our rectangle, toggle a keyframe here, and then at the end, instead of toggling the height, I will toggle the width and set that to zero and easy ease these keyframes to make them more smooth as well. And now we have our animation. Custom lower third. Boom. Super simple. Final thing to do is trim our work comp to just this size. So I'm going to drag this in and then hitting control shift X. Boom. Not too bad, hope that made sense. Next thing we're gonna do is turn it into the motion graphic template and make it editable. This is actually way easier than creating the lower third. That was the most difficult part. To do this, I'm going to go up to Window and then go down to Essential Graphics. What I'm going to do next is select a composition. I'll choose Comp 1 and I will name this Connor Lower Third, just for now. And I will hit Enter. And then what I'm going to do is create a group 
for each of the three attributes that I want to do. First group I'm going to make is top text. The next group I'm going to do is the bottom text. And the final group I'm going to do is for the line. Now within each group, what you do to add the attribute is to simply find it in your composition down here and drag and drop what you want. So for the text on the by user here, this is the bottom text. I am going to go to text and go to source text and drag this into bottom text. So if I go to edit properties, I can enable the font and font size adjustment, click OK. And now I can see that this is fully customizable however I want. Easy. Same thing for the other text, this being the top text, I'm going to left click and drag source text into top text and make sure that those boxes are checked. Final thing I want to do is enable the size parameter or scale parameter for the line. This being because if I go to top text and I make this bigger, it's actually gonna go beyond the size of my mask. So if I press Shift S on the line attributes, I can now drag in scale. And if I increase the scale here, it will allow me to get the full lower third. Anyways, I'm going to set this back down to 100, set this back down to 60, and we have our fully editable file right here. Boom. Then to add it to Adobe Premiere, just click Export Motion Graphics Template. Make sure your project is saved. Press Save. A bunch of windows will pop up. Then you can choose where you want. I like putting it in the local templates folder. Just press OK. Then I can open up Adobe Premiere and go to the graphics panel. And in here, under my templates, I can just search what I created. So I'll search Connor. And I have my Connor lower third right here. It'll take a second to load in. And now we have our fully customizable lower third. To edit it, just left click on it and it should open up the edit attributes on the side. So here I can change this, fully edit, change the bottom text to yes, and make it any size I want. Super easy. This is how you can create motion graphics templates like some of the other big name creators that you see. It's actually not that bad. If you have a lower third, just drag and drop whatever attributes you want to be able to edit into the essential graphics window and you just ship it over to Premiere and you're done. Hope this tutorial has helped you guys and if you want to see me create more advanced lower thirds or other animations in After Effects, let me know. I'd be happy to make a more complicated tutorial on how to do some of those things. I think it's super fun to build out your collection of your own assets that you can use for free in your own videos. That's the idea of Toolkit Tuesday, and I can't wait to catch you guys next week with another Toolkit Tuesday episode. Peace.